guys, welcome. As you may know, this is the challenge of the body and mind workout. So the body, I'm physically challenging myself to get up every other day and go to the gym regardless whether I want to or not, or at least get some sort of movement. Now, the mental workout comes with renewing my mind with God's word. Today we're doing coffee. Actually, let me grab my coffee. We're doing coffee chat. Hey, little coyotes. Hey, this is um, a mind time to actually speak to them. You always get to shine on all my videos. You know, it's not fair. Hmm, she's such a cutie, aren't you? You love your mama. I love having this time to myself in the mornings. Coffee, taking notes, journaling, reading, just all of that. In order for me to get inspired, I always have to go to Target because they have the cutest, the cutest notebooks ever. And I have to make sure that the lines are nice and thick, and then I have to have the right pen. So anyway, so I wanted to show you my notes. The only reason why you don't have to do this, when I write, I feel like just the information just sinks in and I can reflect on it later. You know, it's not just going in one ear out the other. I'm actually processing it a little bit more. So I love taking notes. So I'll kind of do like a brief summary. You know, sometimes it'll just look like, you know, just plain old notes. Sometimes it'll look like timelines, like this one was like a timeline of um, a Jesus sacrifice and the purpose behind it and what we got from it. See, like I love just making it like look pretty because it just makes me want to write more. I'm being creative and it looks really cute. Let's go into this week's summary. So last week it was like chapter four through chapter six. Um, and I, sometimes I break, I don't read a whole chapter. I know it's gonna take me forever to read the Bible this way, but sometimes I'll read the whole chapter and then the next time I read, I'll reread it and let it sink in a little bit. Sometimes I only read a couple of verses and let that just like, and just see God in that mist of that scripture. Um, so, you know, there's no timeline for me. I've just dedicated every other day to God. And so, you know, even if there's some mornings that I don't, I don't give myself a guilt trip. So. Chapter eight. So Jesus made us free from the law. There are two types of people. One type is the type that follows their own natural sinful desires. The second type is the type that seeks God and is obedient to the Holy Spirit. So now everyone falls under the first category. Like we all have our sinful desires. We are all selfish in a way, unfortunately. So basically that brings in Jesus into the equation. So there's two categories. We all fall under the first category and then we have Jesus. Once we say yes to Jesus, yes, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I know that you died for my sins and I accept you in my life and I believe and you confess that he is your Lord and Savior, then you are saved. And now you can follow him. Once you say yes to God, the Holy Spirit is in you. So your sinful desires does not own you anymore, but it's the Holy Spirit that is convicting you, that is guiding you, that is leading you. And so if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, if we didn't say yes to Jesus, then regardless of how good we want to be, we always fall short. We always do. So by saying yes to Jesus, it's saying, I refuse to live by my sinful natures and I say yes to Jesus and I give my life to Jesus. So now we go back to this little pretty picture, the Bible, which equals our daily bread. So he said, the word is our daily bread. The word transforms us, renews us, and it kind of shows us who, no, it doesn't kind of, it actually shows us who Jesus is. How can we get to know Jesus? How do you expect to deepen your relationship with God? 
if you don't know who he is. So how do we find out who he is? It's through his word that we find out his character, his love, and just everything about him. And then not only that, but then you also find out what he expects from us. And he said, so once we say yes to Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit to follow him, right? So follow under his footstep. And he is the ultimate example. He's the only example. You shouldn't look up to your pastors. You shouldn't look up to your leaders. You shouldn't look. They will all fail. Our parents fail us. Okay. I have a couple of friends that really struggle with their past and forgiving. And if you expect Jesus to forgive you for your sins, he expects us to show the same mercy onto others. So we have to forgive we have to show mercy. We have to love. So God doesn't say, you know, an eye for an eye. Like if people love you, love them back. It says, no, even those tough people, I expect you to love them. I expect you to show them what Jesus is here on earth. Like we're supposed to be a reflection of what Jesus is. Sometimes we're the only ones that can truly make an impact in someone else's life that they probably don't have any other believers close to them. And so God has placed us in their lives for a reason to show them what Jesus love is all about. And if we can't do that, it's, it's just a really sad situation. You know, I'm struggling with this too, because it's really easy to love those that love you or, you know, love your family, friends, coworkers. It's easy to love those. It's hard to love people that are constantly bringing you down, people that are hard to love, people that have done you wrong. It's hard to, but Jesus calls us to do that. And if you're not there yet, then be honest with yourself and ask God as Jesus to help you to renew your heart and mind. It's a, literally a renewal. You can't do it on your own. It's through the Holy Spirit that he gives you freedom from fear, from addictions, from anger problems, from just anything. He frees you. We cannot live without the word. If we don't have the word, we don't know what is the difference between good and wrong. If you don't read the word, you might think that you are doing the right thing. You live by your standard and we can't live like that. We don't live by the law anymore, but Jesus' grace has washed us and has made us right with him. Now we are called to basically follow him and be obedient to his word. Grace and obedience go hand in hand because if you love him, you'll do his word. Yes, you have grace, you have forgiveness, but you're also called to walk in faith and walk following him and his example. The biggest thing is always asking yourself, well, would Jesus have done that? And I think that just kind of simplifies a lot of things. That's like one of the questions I tend to ask myself. Well, what would Jesus do in my situation? Because a lot of the times, you know, we're just being really selfish. Another point that really blew my mind was the suffering that we endure here on earth does not compare to the heavenly blessings that we have. Um, waiting for us. I can't imagine there's nothing like this. It's just going to blow our minds off. Like heaven is not what we perceive it to be um, or what we see on TV. It's something unimaginable that will blow our minds. Love that. I want to be there, please. No. <laughs> Just kidding. No, not really. All I know it's going to be good, right? Another amazing point of this chapter was how the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. So basically, even though there's like times where I just like don't feel like praying or don't know exactly what to pray for, or I just feeling down and the Holy Spirit intercedes for me and prays for me. Isn't that amazing? Uh, you know, we still need to pray. But even when we don't, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Amazing, amazing. God works all things for good for those that love him. If it's a bad thing, God can turn it into something good. If it's a good thing, it's a blessing from God. So as a Christian, as a believer, having faith that God can turn around just about any situation 
whether there is a door or not, he can create one or he can close one. He is the creator, he is all-knowing, all-powerful, our father and heaven. He doesn't give us exactly what we want, but what we need. So praying that his will be done in our lives is really important because the daily prayer really comes down to, Lord, may your will be done and just help me accept your decision because sometimes God's pulling us one way and we're thinking we want another route. And he's like, no, I want you exactly where you're at for a reason. And we're like, I just want the next chapter or I wanna get over this like, you know, problem, obstacle, whatever it is. And he's just like, nope, I want you right here. There's growth, there's maturity here, there's character building here, I want you here. It's, oh, he's so amazing, but it's so hard at times because you just wanna get out of the situation. I wanna just end it with, God is always for us. He will never ever leave us. Who can be against us? No one can judge us. God's gift is salvation. Jesus intercedes for you, removes all the guilt and the shame. If he is for us, then who can be against us? We got it really good. I mean, it's just really practicing our faith. You know, the beautiful thing is if you don't feel like you have enough faith, if you feel like you doubt a lot, if you have a lot of fear, ask God to remove that and he will. And I am so happy that we did this. I haven't really drank my coffee. I just love spending time reading his word. I delight in it now. Like, wasn't always like this for me. It it's, has been a challenge to just be committed but now I just look forward to it and I'm making fun. I hope you guys have a blessed day today. I love you all. But anyways, so see you guys next time.